Hello YouTube, welcome to the ninth scenario of Panzer Corps, the Africa Corps campaign. And this scenario is, and I apologize if I get this wrong, Alam Halfa. Now of course we are pushing further and further into British and other Commonwealth countries control. India, Australia, or New Zealand, I'm not sure which. Yeah, I think that's a New Zealand flag there. Anyway, um, it's probably bold. We've got El Alamein here, which is interesting that it's not a key city. And it's heavily, and I do mean heavily, guarded. Um, our key positions here are along this road. Basically, what you're going to do is completely bypass El Alamein go around most of the forces this way and basically you would have them encircled between your Italian buddies here and your German main force being over here so anyway let's get this started and I'll give you kind of a, a walk through this scenario is kind of interesting it's a little difficult I didn't find it overly hard but there are some points in this level that are a little bit of a pain in the ass, so... Getting these scout cars up and running. Do some spotting for us. There's some initial mines. Um, I want to say at the beginning of the game. At the beginning of this scenario, however... It pretty much is only at the beginning from what I've seen. There's really nothing beyond this point. And they're pretty heavily dug in. They've got a lot of stuff here. Lots of infantry, lots of artillery as you can obviously see. And it's kind of a pain in the ass. Even with my tanks, it still gets a little squirty at times. So. Our Stu given a nice shot. To, what is that, a Stuart? Uh, we got a defense plus one. Alright. Basically, the whole first part of the scenario, and really a large portion of it, is just trying to break through this massive amount of stuff they have built up along this line. And here, let's pause this real quick so you can get. A really good idea. I don't know. Went a little bit too far. On the next turn, I'll try to pause it for you. Just so you can get an idea of what we're trying to do right there. Took one casualty, but all in all, not bad. I'm trying to open up a bigger hole here so that we can move some tanks through. Found some artillery back here. There's a. MG group here. Easily taken care of. Stugs aren't terribly awesome about attacking artillery units like infantry and the plane tanks are, but they still work. Didn't know there was one there, kind of ran into that. Okay. We're going to try to bypass those last three mines that are there down the bottom. Start working our way at these infantry and artillery units here, although by and large I recommend bypassing them as much as possible. You don't really need to fight them, it's not a necessity, so... Got a surprise encounter there, which is really, really good. Pioneers shot back and actually did some pretty easy damage. Spitfire showing our Italians who's better. Counter attacking with Grants. Not doing the best job of it. Here comes a Crusader. He did a lot better. Stewart trying to sneak in behind us here. Very interesting. This 
got a car getting beat on. Looks like he's going to the graveyard. He is indeed. Not such a great thing to have happen, but not the end of the world. Wow, losing two units. That's terrible. So we actually lost one of our three J's that was ours. And that was an SE unit. Luckily, we can get more SE units by simply getting brilliant. Or I'm sorry, brilliant. I'm thinking of concentrated. Decisive victories. So we're not too bad off here. Stuart taking pretty decent damage. Over 50% casualties. I tried to sneak around. I forgot. I don't know why I don't remember those damn mines are there, but they are. So I couldn't get behind him, but that's okay. He's pretty well damaged, so it's not likely he'll do much there. And our Panzer 4G will do some decent amount of damage against these Grants, which at this point are pretty outdated. The Crusaders are generally outdated as well, although they're still more formidable. They deal significantly more damage than the Grants do on average. <laughs> Our little flame tank couldn't quite get him. It wasn't the little tank that could, but we tried. Stu taking his shot at the Grant, dealing massive damage. Killing off a few enemy aircraft here. Taking moderate casualties, but nothing significant. Taking out that hurricane. Almost got that Crusader dead. I'm gonna go for the kill here. Couldn't quite get it. Artillery taking a decent pot shot at the Stuart. Yeah, let's see if we can pause here for just a sec so I can give you a view of what their equipment looks like. Here we go. Okay, so. El Alamein is pretty well defended, as I said. It's definitely some that you wouldn't want to try to go do. So our defensive positions are here. They can't see what we have, thankfully. If they did, they might just attack. And they've got infantry covered by an artillery piece and an anti-aircraft, which is absolutely devastating. Then on top of that, if you thought, oh, well, I'll just break through here. Well, no, you won't. Three anti <laughs> might as well be anti anti infantry artillery units, an anti aircraft unit, and a really massive over strength um, anti tank gun. And there's a couple of these in this level two or three, maybe even four. And 15 strength on really any unit is insane. So when you see one of those, it's kind of disheartening because your units typically except for maybe your fighters or your artillery or maybe you do yours differently maybe you have some of your units on the ground that are over strength and i find that most of the time when i do that it's not really worth it due to the fact that they just get hurt so quickly anyway that the over strengthening really doesn't last long enough for me to get enough use out of it but anyway um just those mines that are there uh, we're gonna bypass all of these probably and let's get another look over here so Again, this is real nasty right here. I don't know why this artillery is so far forward, but it is. Um, this will be easy pickings here. And then the infantry units will be a little bit more difficult to, to route. Same situation here. You've got another counterattack literally lying in wait for you. This is the mobile radar in which you'll need to destroy. It is part of the mission. We also have... Another really nasty overstrengthened anti tank unit and an anti aircraft unit guarding these bad boys here. So, all in all, uh, it's not too bad, but it can be rather frustrating trying to dig these guys out from their positions. So, 
Anyway, let's uh, let's not waste any more of your time. Let's get going again here. Looks like we may lose that scout car. Interesting. Stewart attacking into our infantry. Extremely fair exchange there, two and two. Scout car's in trouble here. And he surrendered. That's actually three units we've lost. Two non-core units and one core unit. Oh boy. We're gonna lose another one here. Doesn't look like we will, because it's our turn now, so we actually got saved on that last one. Nice. Taking pretty moderate casualties here. I mean, we're getting the job done, but we're, we're definitely paying for it. Luckily, we do have a pretty fair amount of prestige, so we're not in the hole yet. Absolutely destroying that scout car of theirs in one shot is pretty crazy. Attack plus one for that little Ponzer 3 there, he deserves it. Oh, another absolute destruction of their tank with one shot. It was a Ponzer 4G taking out that Crusader. Mm, that Grant put up a pretty decent fight there. He actually got some damage on us. But he too will fall victim to their attacks eventually. Infantry unit taking massive damage from our Ponzer 2, our flame tank. Retreating that poor Ponzer 4G who got beat up. Finally picking off that infantry unit, thankfully. We will not be able to finish that infantry unit without our... Oh, I don't know what trying to say here. That tank unit, that little Grant there, I don't think we'll be able to take him out this turn. Since he doesn't have artillery support, that's why I moved up the way I did. Since he changed it over, I thought it was a good idea. The Grant giving his last hurrah. Got in behind the infantry unit, absolutely took out 99% of them. Leaving them with one strength is pretty much a death sentence. This is vastly a reinforcement turn as you saw there. Most of the units, I went ahead and just stopped the advance for a turn to make sure that we have enough left in the tank to continue moving up. There won't be a surrender here because he has somewhere to go. However, he will be destroyed. We did manage to get that artillery unit taken out. That's really good. Gosh, three killed. Man. Okay, so the... Regia Aeronautica is sending reinforcements again with the pronunciation of some of these words, I apologize. In other words, they're going to give us some fighters or some bombers or something. I think they're fighters um, a turn or two from now. Until then, we're pretty much on our own, though. Although, to be honest, we are handling things just fine. That is our Spitfire from Malta. Giving us a little action here. Getting rid of a couple more of their aircraft is always a good idea. Managed to get an initiative plus one for our Italian fighter, which once again has been upgraded. He is now an MC-205, I think it's Veltro? I, I could be wrong about that, but I think that's it. And it looks like, let's see here, what is this one? Oh, artillery. So the artillery unit was just given a attack plus one reward. Not a reward, I suppose, but leader that gives them attack plus one. And we're picking on the infantry up here that no longer has any artillery support. They're putting up a decent fight. Honestly, I kind of like, while I'm watching this, I'm not even really sure it's worth killing these guys that are up here. But then I kind of think it is because of the, 
the way that you have to move, you have to move in between these hills and whatnot. So, yeah, I mean, it's definitely questionable. You may do it different than I do, but just like point that out. Okay. Oh, wow. Almost single handedly destroyed one of my fighters there. Dealing with these crusaders here, getting them out of our way. Devastating attacks by our Stug and our 4G. I know that this anti-tank gun here is not going to come out of that city, so... Or point, whichever they're calling it, it's a point. They're not going to come out of there because... Uh, it would literally be a death wish if they did, so I'm not worried about an anti-tank gun. Flanking the artillery, trying to get some decent shots on them. And yet another one bites the dust. There's that way over strengthened um, anti tank gun that I showed you. It was just an absolute terror against our tanks. Don't even try to use your tanks against that guy, it will not be successful. Okay, so that was pretty good. Uh oh. Yeah, see, that's generally what happens right there. The good news oh, he actually did come out. Wow. Well, I suppose he's got that infantry in it. No, he didn't move the infantry in either, though. Wow, really interesting. I don't see how that was a good play, but whatever. Movement plus one for the Panzer 3N. Dealing with this Grant that's up here as well. There's no more. Taking out that Pioneer Infantry unit's a pretty big deal, to be honest. And honestly, at this stage, we're probably going to bypass that anti-tank gun for the most part. Although, you know, I don't remember. I played this scenario twice, and it is possible that I may end up killing it off just because I'm worried about it. We'll see. In one of the playthroughs I did, I bypassed it, and the other one I destroyed it. So we'll have to see what happens here. Okay, not bad. He's in anti-tank mode there, so we can kind of use that to our advantage a little bit. Take out some more of these infantry units here. Now if I'm real smart, yeah, I was going to say if I'm real smart, I'll just leave the rest of these guys because they're vastly out of our way pretty much. No point in killing guys that really aren't going to make any difference in the long run. There was our reinforcements, in case you were wondering. Didn't get to see them very fast because the replays are pretty quick, but you will see them soon. Look like three Italian bombers, or I'm sorry, fighters. Actually, it went better than I thought. Wow. Okay. Trying to get rid of this bomber because they are just really devastating if you don't. We were successful with our one on our G. Okay, Spitfire's putting some damage here. A little extra there. Here's our reinforcements from our Italian friends. Oh no, I take that back. That's actually our Italian bomber. Gosh, I keep saying bomber. Fighter. And he got the gold medal for Military Valor. That there was one of the uh, non core a couple of them, three of them actually, so. So most of the time in this level I do have air superiority most of the time. So we are vastly more in control of the air than we were 
in the other scenarios. Especially the Gazala line. Absolute nightmare of a level. Going to need your infantry. It's just this level's just how it is. I recommend not killing that uh, anti-aircraft unit if you don't have to. And the reason I recommend that is he cannot retake anything, so the anti-aircraft unit is not capable of capturing cities, points, towns, whatever. That's why it's a good idea. So, wow. Oh, I mean, it didn't turn out bad, but attacking an anti-tank unit is not all that good, usually. So, we're basically encircling our enemies at this point. Most of them, anyway. Now that our artillery is in place, I think it's pretty much the beginning of the end of this middle uh, section here. Oh, okay. So I guess I am going to take it out. Well, you know what? I take that back. I take back what I said earlier. You actually do need to get rid of him because the anti-aircraft unit is right on top of the airport. And if you're smart, you're going to use that airport because it's closer. So forget what I said earlier. You're much better. That right there is exactly why. Uh, you can not retreat as far back with your aircraft units and then you're going to get a lot more use out of them. Yeah, absolutely wrong advice I gave earlier. Make sure you take him out. Not because he can recap, but simply because you need those aircraft to have a place to park. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Well, as long as nobody hits that Pioneer Infantry there, it's fine. Churchills are a little problematic, but I think for the most part we'll be okay. Oh wow. We wrecked that Crusader, so that's good. That is a non-core unit. Uh, I believe it's Italian troopers, which is pretty cool. Which you can't buy, by the way. So far I believe this is the only scenario where you even see them. So, Defense plus two for our Pioneer Infantry is always good. I always like getting defense bonuses for infantry. I actually prefer it over attack. And the reason for that is the later the levels you go through, tanks just become increasingly more devastating. And infantry is a lot harder to keep alive. So that is my preference, is defense over attack. I suppose you could argue the best defense is a good offense, but in my opinion, Defense is a good defense, in this case. Okay, so got us a little Grant tank here that we're going to attack with our stew. Have to do a little retreating here, it looks like. Good shot. Getting rid of another hurricane. Oh, and a bomber was coming in to ruin our day and he got caught. Although it looks like we're going to pay the price anyway. Wow. How is he killing eight? That's insane. Wow, that's bullshit. Uh, those were non-core units, of course. But still, I don't understand how he kills 8 with his 11. That's crazy. I mean, are they that much better? I guess they have to be. We did find our radar dish here commencing its destruction. Get rid of that pesky anti-aircraft. 
attack plus three for our Panzer 4G. I like that a lot. So with infantry, I like to have defense, and with tanks, I really like to get attack. Attack with tanks is pretty much the best scenario, I think. Destroying that mobile radar dish. And I'm guessing in the process, really limiting their vision from what it looks like. Which is pretty big. If they can't see us, they can't really do much to us, so there you go. Giving us a lot of trouble here, this little Spitfire. At this stage, the Spitfires are just absolutely devastating. However, we are holding our own, and they took very heavy casualties with their aircraft this turn, so I'm pretty satisfied with that. Using our flame tanks to help dig out the infantry. Absolutely destroying them with zero casualties with this flame tanks. This will be the last of the infantry guarding their middle section here, which will basically uh, complete our encirclement. Encirclement complete. Now all we have to do is what we're doing here, which is coming in behind the units that you see. The Grant is unfortunately going to be destroyed here for him. Oh no, he actually lives. <laughs> okay. Of course, the faster we get our infantry to the highest point in the map, the better, because that will be the units that will be the most effective at destroying other infantry units that are, well, guarding the last parts of our objective, so. Looks like he's got three more aircraft and, and po ooh, almost killed him. And possibly more, um, but I believe, shut from the ocean. So we do still have to deal with a few more. Just expect in every scenario you play in the Africa Corps campaign to be outnumbered. Okay, that's kind of crappy. So the anti-aircraft division here, they got a defense plus three. I would have rather had an attack plus three simply for the reason that it would have been more effective. So. But we'll take what we can get and give nothing back. So we're losing a couple more units this turn with the aircraft. Spitfire coming in and just messing that guy up. Trying to get these uh, anti-tank guys out of this little airfield here. It's actually an English unit holding this uh, particular airfield. It's a six-pounder. And they were completely decimated. Finally, we can start our attack on this Churchill. Already dealing a decisive blow, knocking him down to 30% health. And taking him out completely. So it's pretty much over already. Once you get to this stage, the only real thing that can bite you in the ass is if they try to back cap and you're not ready for it. Also, you want to make sure that you don't leave anything too important in your rear, such as artillery or weak infantry. There's a couple more. That's what I thought. Actually, looks like you may have, what, three more um, aerial units, so... Don't know where they came from. I'm guessing it's just reinforcements that they get through the game, which is just nuts, because they've already had a ton.
And really we're going to focus in on these bombers because they're way more dangerous to us than the fighters are. While the fighters usually, to be honest with you, the British fighters do pretty decent against our ground units, they're not nearly as bad as any type of bomber that we would encounter, so definitely want to get that taken care of quick. Just two infantry units left up here, and then we will have a decisive victory. We are on turn 15 of 18, so we are cutting it a little close, but I think overall we're doing really well. We'll go ahead and lose another bomber. Ugh. That was another non-core unit, but we did lose him. And as you can see, the casualties just really mount up depending on what you do. Here you go. So they're starting to move around, and this is when you got to be careful. So as you can tell, they're coming to try to aid these guys slowly but surely. They don't have any vehicles, so they can't move too quickly. But that doesn't matter, you know, they, if, if they manage to get up here, they will be a problem very quick. So flame tank dealing about 50% damage, and the next one completely destroying them was actually going on 50%. And there you go guys, that right there is a decisive victory on turn 16 of 18. So we actually had a two turn surplus. And this level, in my opinion, is not all that difficult. If you kind of take advantage of them being out of place and their units protecting a town or a city that's really, uh, it's not even a core town or city, El Alamein. You literally just bypass it and encircle them and they automatically lose anyway, so you don't even care. Anyway guys, as usual, like, subscribe, share with your friends, all that good stuff. And... Please watch the rest of this series if you like this video and some of my other videos. And as always, have a good one. See you in the next one.